Let's go back to the introduction. Nowadays, 3D printing or rapid prototyping is a technology that uses 3D computer aids designed to produce synthetic physical models. And its primary advantage is its ability to create almost any complex shape or geometric feature. Also, the cost and size of 3D printers have decreased rapidly over the past decades. And it has become easy to assist um, digital data used to build 3D printed models. Therefore, people started to compare the learning efficiency between 3D printed models and traditional methods. And found that it was a potential way to improve medical students' learning. Um, several randomized controlled trials were published in the literature regarding learning human anatomy and skeletal traumatology. And craniofacial trauma was one of the basic knowledge of old undergraduate um, medical students. They need to know about the, the anatomy of head and neck bones and the special organization of these bones. Anatomical relationship with sensory organs and many mechanism and biomechanical concepts, and also clinic, clinical as, aspects of craniofacial fracture. So many teachers have resorted to display 3D representation of the craniofacial fracture on 2D monitor. And now, 3D printed models may be the potential trends. It is difficult for medical students to understand this issue due to complexity of cranial facial anatomy and heart special representation of facial bone pieces and fractures. Furthermore, facial trauma is including an important biomechanical dimension because of the impact on dental occlusion and the possibility of obstacles on jaw mobility. So, this study conducted a randomized controlled trial comparing 3D printed, printed model versus classic virtual 3D reconstruction display in two dimensions. So it's about the material and methods. As we know, this is a prospective randomized controlled educational trial. And there were initially 487 participants from Leo Medical School in France and 55 of them were excluded due to not showing up or being late for the session. In the French medical curriculum, the diagnosis of a cranial facial trauma, including mandib mandibular fracture, is part of the standard undergraduate curriculum. And in contrast, more specific elements of diagnosis, such as differentiate, differentiating stable or unstable fracture, or more complex complex factors are parts of the postgraduate curriculum, but the trial focused on the basic diagnosis assessment. As for the study design, all participants were assigned randomly to one of the two groups. And 206 were assigned to the 3D printed support group, and other 226 were assigned to the 2D display support group. After an introductory lecture explaining the trial, both groups were assigned to two separate classrooms for a one hour self direct um, assessment session using either 3D printed or 2D display model. And then all participants completed pre tests to record specialized data about their interesting to uh, video games, previous contact with 3D printing models and special representation skills. And finally, they performed the same context-based 
multiple choice question examination was with the nice teacher support. So the context-based true or false multiple choice questionnaire was specifically designed based on the questions related to biomechanical, anatomical, and clinical aspect to distinguish the two teaching materials. The questionnaire includes 10 questions. Um, there are six, um, six, six questions related to the biomechanical dimension and three anatomical questions and one diagnosis question. So the questions are timed and the students have one minute to answer each question. And the answer will be corrected computationally. And then sex and potential confounding factors have been evaluated, including absence for video games, previous contact with 3D printing models, special representation skills and educational achievements of the students. Actions of video games were evaluated by asking about playing frequency and the type of video games. 3D based video games such as um, first person shooter or multiplayer online role playing games. And previous contact with 3D printing model identifies students that has been um, previously manipulated 3D printed object or who own the 3D, print, the 3D printer from those who had no any um, who had no any experience. And the special representation skills were evaluated using a mental rotation test that involved mentally build, building the cube from thread model into di dimension. And finally, previous educational achievements of the students were obtained by recovering the general average score on recent school examination. So a set of three models were printed, including a model of the mid-face with a diagnostic fracture and two medical models, including normal and fracture one. Each complete set was printed at 65% scale with 0.2 millimeter layer thickness for a total duration of 16 hours and 22 minutes and a total weight of 137 grams. And here are the statistic analysis. Principal objective was evaluated by comparing the total score between two groups. And secondary objective were evaluated by comparing the biomechanical school score and the diagnostic question. So um, let's go into the results. This is the trial four chart presented here and around 432 <coughs> participants. Only one was excluded from the 3D group during the trial after randomization because he did not correctly complete the questionnaire. So 431 students were thereby included in the statistical analysis. And participants in those groups exhibit similar previous student educational achievements and visual special skills. And sex-related difference was also not observed between the two groups. Um, so, um, more students report at least one previous contact in 3D printing models in the 3D group, and that's the only one um, showed a significant difference. And regarding the global score, 3D printed model was considered to be the better teaching material compared to the 2D supports significantly. And as for the biochemical aspect and diagnostic question, 3D printed model provide better understanding as well. And finally, here's this discussion of the study. Um, 3D printed model have a broad range of potential application within surgical education and training, such as cardiovascular surgery, digestive surgery, and orthopedics and traumatology and so on. This prior study reported that 3D models globally enhance the spatial learning, understanding recognition of the anatomical structure, and also memory for real 
objects compared with traditional methods. And there's a particularity that we study involving uh, involved the biomechanical aspect of these teaching supports. In the first parts of the presented course, a zygomatic fracture with an important dis displacement can induce a mouse opening limitation because uh, a conflict be between the zygomatic arch and the coronoid process of the mandible. And in the second part of the, the case, the patient presented a displaced double mandibular fr fracture leading to an altered bite, including contralateral premature occlusion content and homolateral anterolateral open bite. Both biomedical, uh, biomechanical <clears throat> abnormalities are very difficult to teach and to understand without the use of magnetic support. So this study is the first to show a significant enhancement of the ability to optimize spatial representation understanding of complex mobile anatomy. Um, the literature reported that cadaveric best teaching, med uh, medical imaging, and clinical case-based scenario were the key elements of a musculoskeletal anatomy curriculum. Um, as for the visual special dimension and haptic dimension are the specific advantage of 3D printed model. And that means this learning support is able to visualize ab abnormal anatomy compared with cadaveric specimens. And also haptic model was proved having linked with the stereoscope site by functional MRI in previous research. Besides, the main strength of this study is large population, prospective randomized controlled methods, and incorporating several potential visual special confounding factors, such as aptitude for video games and previous contact with 3D printing, and also special representation skill. So, some people improve their special skill performance by experiencing special training. For example, playing video games was proved to outperform the perceptual dominance and giving better short-term memory resource and provide faster perceptual processing skill. And also, mental rotation is another potential confounding factor with a close relationship to the special skill. And some literature showed that um, male performed better than female on some special tests on average. However, previous contact with video game and mental rotation were not identified as confounding factor in this study, suggesting that 3D object manipulation is poorly in influenced by special skill predictors. And there was also no any gender um, difference noted between the two randomized groups. That is, 3D, 3D printed model may improve the performance of learning on anyone without impact on individual special skills. Um, finally, there e exists limitation of this study that it did not include long-term retention of the information assessment for ethical reason. Due to a significant difference between the two teacher supports, all students of the control arm were offered instruction on correction of the clinical case using 3D printed model to avoid any inequity. And another major point was that the mean score achieved by the medical students on the multiple choice questionnaire were relatively bad. It is because no student had previously had a specific lesson on this topic to avoid any selection bias. And the questionnaire were checked correctly only when all the five items of each question were correct. So this may be the main reasons that reduce scores. And third, there was no qualitative feedback collecting formally. So to conclude this study, 
This perspective randomized controlled educational trial demonstrated that in cooperation of 3D printed model, the structure with special complexity improved medical students' understanding of cranial facial fracture. And it may be given by the characteristic of contextualizing haptic visual data and facilitating precise exploration of specific competence to acquire by students, such as biomechanical concepts. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Is there any comments or questions about this? The, the one group is <coughs> model. The other group is and for image. Uh, um, it, it, it means that um, it shows the three D reconstruction in the two two D monitor. Okay, so it is three D three D imaging. Yeah. Three D imaging compared with three D model. Yes. I did the the comparative study before. It shows that there are some advantage disadvantage between the two group model and 3d image yeah you know but uh it's not for medical students certainly for medical students maybe model is more critical哦就是呃就是刚刚讲就是有一些有一些东西是可以就增进就是大家空空间感的那个那个技巧但是这一天的意思是说就是如果我们有三 a mental rotation is <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> <音>这个好像是PRS今年三月的paper啦 那其实从1980年代Chocol 呃现阶段来说的话相关类似的文章还能够被 PRS收入其实不容易 因为大家已经发表了非常的泛滥, 
。那这边可能它的唯一被收录，因为它是 RCT， 它是一个 randomized control trial 的 study， 那去 include 到一些 medical student 进来，然后分成两个组别来做这样的测试，那结果也是非常 promising 的。那其实3 D P 在各个医学中心里面也都一直在被广泛的被运用，所以他们的 center 都有蛮多还不错的的成功的的案例。那其实像我之前在达拉斯的 U C South Western c a n 那边也是有自己本身的一个3 D P 的 center。那它的 center 其实算蛮 generous， 的它是 enroll 全院的所有人，只要想要用3 D P 这样的一个概念，或是列印帮助，不管是教育或者是手术的进行。呃，都可以开放给大家使用，所以它里面的那一个 gallery 里面其实有放很多像是跟 heart 合作的印出来的心脏，或者是呃 GI 的 track 的这样的一个三 DP 的东西，其实还蛮蛮蛮多才多才多姿的。对，那现现在的话，其实其实我觉得这个篇 paper 其实它没有很难呐、啊，因为它我看它比较最后只有 MCQ 的 data 比较起来的这样的一个 figure 来表示他们这样呈现出来是有意义的。的之外，其实它没有非常的 scientific 的一个 statistic 的的,的概念在里面，可能被收录只是因为它的人数很多，然后很干净的 data， 然后很清楚的的描述方式，跟融合的一些什么 spatial scale 在里面，然后去排除这些的影响，呃，被 PIS 收录在里面，我是这么觉得，但是是个好文章。Okay, uh, uh, 对对对，嗯，这很重要。他只有知道之前有没有对三 D P 有概念跟没有概念，然后做出来是有差异性的。对，所以就是说，如果是有一些教育心理学的人进来的话，他们他们的一些读心理的人，他们的要求是很高，他会把把这些。进来之前就先处理，比如说一些一般的那种呃心理学方面的杂理的话，可以找一下。嗯哼。那那我们就进入。没有 OK。正在分享。
in bioelectronics, I'm the third year resident well. And today I'm going to present an article published in the journal of PRS for in March March uh, 2022. The topic is Cedric's first automatic approach to correlation symmetry, AI-based cephalometry analysis. The study was conducted in University of Osan, Weishan, and in South Korea. And the author of this study was uh, well known for facial and hand and neck reconstruction. This is a photo of, of the of the journal of the article, and this is the content I'm going to present today. Uh, this is quite a small article, and first I would like to introduce the very first orthogonal approach. It has gained uh, popularity in recent years. It has deserved some multiple advantages, such as uh, post-operative post improvement, acceleration of post-operative improvement. While its use in treating facial asymmetry is remain, remain unclear. So the study is quite straightforward. The author is trying to figure out the, uh, the outcomes of facial asymmetry first approach in treating facial asymmetry. The, uh, the patients were those under with spatial asymmetry and undergone two jaw surgery between 2006 to 2019, and those with cleft or any other systemic disease were excluded. Uh, as, as Dr. Lee introduced that the highlight action, the highlight of this article was AI-based cephalometric measurement and the algorithm of the uh, AI can be divide, uh, can comprise two steps. The first step was to uh, detect region of interest, and then with this region of interest, they can they can exactly locate the landmark. And for the first for the first for the first step, uh, the network was, the model was trained by a network to figure out the region of interest, and each region of interest uh, has different surrounding areas. And so the size of each region of interest was the size of each surrounding interest was based on the size of was based on the landmark, and the landmark was located by an expert surgeon. Then with the with the region of interest, the exact location of each landmark can be de detected through a semantic segmentation network based on previous based on the first uh, step, the region of interest. And the data, the data set of this model was uh, 2,843 uh, frontal cephalometric radiography. And the training data, validation data, and testing data, the ratio was 8 to 1 to 1. And the learning rate was 0 0.0001. The cephalometric, there are, uh, there are, there are, uh, the reference points were located here. The, Z, the horizontal line were the connection between the two Z point. In the article, the author didn't show the Z point, but I think it's the uh, intersection between the lateral orbital wall and the greater sphenoid wing. As for, and, uh, and the vertical, the vertical reference, reference line, the red line was, the, uh, was perpendicular, to, perpendicular to the horizontal line that, create, that passed through crystal galley. And J and uh, yellow, the yellow line were the vertical line of the maxillar and med were uh, vertical height of the maxillar and medical. And the, for the purple line were the horizontal width. The J point I think is the lateral wall of the 
uh, mixed data, just the convex concavity of the of the mixed data. And for the cephalometry analysis, there was three the <clears throat> there was three period of uh, measurement time measurements. P zero means preoperative period, and T one T one means the immediate postoperative time, and T two was the follow up twelve to fifteen months. Uh, for the result, the demographic was shown as this uh, this table. There are 33 patients receiving surgery first orthodontic approach and 23 orthodontic first. And for class one in the surgery first group were 21, 10 in 10, 10 for class 10 in class for class two and two class three. In the orthodontic first approach, there were 21 patients in a, with a class one occlusion, five with class two occlusion and no class three occlusion. While there were no significant difference. Uh, significant occlusal difference. Uh, for cephalometric measurement, uh, the figure only show the t the time t zero and the long term follow up. Uh, in the article, the author not the author mentioned that there were no significant difference in both in among t zero, t one, and t two. Uh, as for the relapse ratio, relapse ratio, uh, the next. For Mexico and Mandible hidden width, hidden width, there were no significant difference. All, all the p-value were over 0 0.05. That means the equal reliability of surgery first and orthodontic first approach in patients with facial asymmetry. And in this article, the interpreter reliability between uh, AI and the expert surgeon were 0 0.9. This is quite a high interrater reliability. It means that the, the results from the, from the machine is quite reliable. Uh, let's, let's go on to a discussion. And surgery first approach yields similar results <coughs> in treating facial asymmetry in comparison to traditional orthodontic <coughs> first. It has similar surgical outcomes that we can, uh, we can see here. And a similar and similar relapse ratio in this, in this, in this table. Pre previously, the traditional cephalometric measure uh, was also detected by uh, computer software, and but manual detected by expert uh, plastic surgeon or plastic surgeon or orthodontic surgeon. But it's quite consuming. And it has low level of interrater and correlator reliability. But in this article, the uh, the interrater reliability reliability was zero point nine, and it's, uh, it's quite high. And the margin error was only one point twenty four milli millimeter. Uh, this is quite a small article. It has only four to five pages, but if uh, it was published in uh, a good journal, journal of PRS in the idea innovation section. So I think the I think the highlight of this article was AI based cephalometric measurement. Also, for the type of message first, the surgery first uh, has similar results in comparison to traditional method, and AI AI could really help us in evaluating surgical outcomes. Uh, thank you for your thank thank you.
呃，如果在两个 s e p a r a s e p a r a t r y 的话，会有比较低、比较耗时，然后比较耗时，然后那个呃 ，reliability 信赖 reliability 比较低。那透过这 AI， 他觉得是一个跟专业的外专业的医师来讲是差不多的。那所以说以后也可以透过这 AI 来测。好像后面的 surgical group 跟 also group 其实都二三十个 case 而已。那它其实是看 s e p a r a t r y 但 AI 现在你要在3 D 上用，其实很困难，因为它 GPM 跑不快，因为它的 volume 太大，所以一般只能够在2 D 的 X ray 去喂养它，它才有办法去 run 所有的 database。所以它这篇 paper 也许只是要来看说 s e p a r a t r y 是不是说。从 s e p a 去看它，呃，相对位置之后去取决它是 class one、class two 或 class three 的的这样的分别吧？还是说它真的对手术上会有什么样的帮助？它是直接去量那些点，它也没有，它没有去区分说它到底是 class one 还是 three。class one 是说它只是为了让它，那那我觉得它应该是只是说它给它一张 s e p a r a t r y 然后它 auto l a n d m a r k i n g 跟人为 l a n d m a r k i n g 它认为这两个 match 的 rate 高不高？应该是这个样子。它只是去 design 出一种可以用 AI 来 base 的，去帮它做自动化的加注所有 l a n d m a r k i n g 在 s e p a r a t r y 上的这样的功能，然后再用 expert 去量 s e p a r a t r y 上那个点之后，然后去做 c o r r e l a b i l i t y 看这两个人的信赖度到底高还不高，应该是这个样子而已。但它实际上对于手术的帮助好像是就没那么高。现在部分现在的 s e p a r a t r y 可能都被。还有的一些做出来马上就非常有用。有有有，对对对对对。那个其实也算是 AI 的一种。其实我们我们的工农实验室里面有几个像3 D MD 的那一个程式秀出来的点，它也可以直接把我所有脸上的标记点全部都放上去。它已经本身自己都有内建一套系统，可以 auto l a n d m a r k i n g 那 auto l a n d m a r k i n g 出来的那个点，其实我们实际上去看的话，我们把它抓出来看，它点都偏很多啊。它都会偏很差，差点一到两个秘密的是，真的是蛮严重的。是大人跟小孩其实都会差蛮多的，去看它。所以实际上真的 o p e n l a n d m a r k i n g 的准确度高不高，现在还没有办法被很很很好的被那个表示出来。嗯、第一个，它它这一边这一边装入它，它跟韩国的那个那个那个那个那个那个那韩国呃这方面是从蛮前面，那时候在土耳其上面，那甚至有到一点点的三级。那其实整整合来讲，它的问题很多，太多了。嗯嗯。那五 D 跟十 D 来讲，当然是认为说十 D 哦，它的如果是人去点的话，十 D 是比较准确，特别是在银幕来四的时候，那又特别。在五 D 的五 D 的 A B E 的 A B 的 A B C， 一般来讲 ，Laser C 它的它的那个 C M A 的比 A B 来讲比较难去去，它的准确率会高一点。那 A B 的话，因为它它太多东西，然后放射，然后从特别是或者特别是中线中线点这些点，然后去点出来，甚至用人去。那所以，比如说去去那个位置，一定要修修一个那个 A P P。对啊，这一张这一张
他选他用的这些的话，都是在去写，就是随便随便拿一张纸，然后自己去写一写，写一个十次。所以其实他用再用 AI 来点这个东西，其实和那个人家这个不太，对，因为人在点的时候，人去点，因为他都是要人去点 Go Stand 的到机器去，然后让电脑学，那电脑学出来的东西，然后检查，检查，检查，再加上加上 AP 的预测的话，通常他用的一些 n e t w o r 他是。说某一些特征点，那个重叠交叉点，那这些重叠交叉点，我们稍微摆一下不同的角度，它的那个交叉点就会不一样。那如果重叠的状态不是很 clear cut 的时候，那点出来的就不一样。所以当它做出来，做出来说，哎，这个呃没有误差，没有没有没有差别。然后有时候两组。有很小的差距的时候，就需要很准确，或者是要很大量的内场才有办法去去证明说这两组是有差别、嗯。那所以，当你的 error 越高的时候，判断出来两组是没有差别，其实是没有准确。再补充一下，就像昨天我们在。呃 o j s meeting 提到用 b a c k t r a c k 跟用3 D M D， 然后那当然金学长说 b a c k t r a c k 可以去把做一个 g e n e o p l a s t i c 它可以在脸部上这边这边移动，然后抓出来之后就去去看。那其实它在抓出来的时候，它那个下的那一个点其实就是很重要的那一个点的。它只是要，比如说我们只是跟患者做解释，他患者也不需要很 exactly 的知道说我是从哪个点去做 elongation 或是 advancement， 那他只是想要知道说视觉上他觉得他有变化了。所以类似这样的，其实它 auto landmarking 在每一套 m a c t r a 或者3 D 眼镜，它都有这样的方式。我们迅速的去把把物体做移动，然后给一个非常快速 fast 的一个患者的的印象，他就会觉得还不错，有有收获。但实际上我们在做，比如说我跟姚医师在做所谓的手术模拟的时候，我们下的每一个点都是要非常 specific， 然后很准确的那个 landmarking。他办法去呃呃决定出我们的 intermediate stand， 它的左边右边它的弱，它要 impression 的量到底要多少，这就没有办法用他自己本身内建的 auto d e m a r k i n g 的方式来帮我们下 d e m a r k i n g 的点，大概差异就是在这个地方。那其实上次我们也邀请洪贤清师来我们这边发表 AI 的专题演讲，他现在在迪卡大职工，他也是在想要设计出比到他自己本身在下所有 two D 或三 D 影像 d e m a r k i n g 上跟 auto d e m a r k i n g 上。来比较两个准确性到底高还是不高？他也是在找这个答案跟方式的。我们我们那个沙粒上面哦，就要知道受力学相对 scale 的一个变化，我们都在找这之间的关联。对对对。那但是有一件事情是我们 three D simulation 到到 clinical 的。condition 的那个交通，哦，它本身就会有一个错。它虽然说误差不是那么大，但似乎似乎就是说，哎，我们之后在 prediction 的时候，这个误差有没有办法？再再再说一下，因为当你 simulation 到 scale 的时候，然后你用这个 simulation 想要去 predict predict 它的。他的呃 ，search 或搜集，然后看，然后你都会出错。有，是也相当困难。对，因为从硬硬组织到软组织，它要 translation 到它真的的 performance， 中间还会穿插很多，也许手术当中的精致度或细致度，还有新手或者是老手的 manipulation 过的那个手臂学的变化，还是会有多少会有影响。那就是为什么有些 data 做出来，像我们昨天报的那边是日本，本身只能够 feed 它本身那个 center 才能得到那个预测值的结果，所以每一个预测值的结果，也许都只能够 feed 某个老师或某个 center 或某个 specific clinic 出来的结果 only。你这一套的 prediction 如果到另外一家去做同样的 correlation， 可能会有不一样的 data， 
，所以他们也许可以卖，可卖不出去，没有人要买。因为你预测系统跟我做的方式不一样的时候，我得到的不是你我们要的，不是我们自己啊 ，our own 的 database 出来的结果。这个是那个昨天我们在一些新闻那个下里，呃，我要讲的是，无论怎么做 AI 的东西，事实上到后来呢，都是要，尤其是做视频本身要做决定，不可能让 AI 去做我们的。也就是说，真的是没办法做视频的时候，几乎不会让我们可以找 AI 去做这件事情去。哪怕不来讲，用这个方法也好，什么也好。来印证一下，我们 center 里面这么大的 data 和这么多的 search 和这么多算做出来的东西到底是什么样子？到底有什么稀缺的东西？这是我们的资源。那我们这么大资源里面呢，想办法用我们刚才说的一些 tool 或者这种方法，或者是 thinking about 去设计一下。我们也可以讲，有的想是说，至少我们可以能够通过 search 来 design 一下你的。我们看到 conclusion， 你要做怎么样？那那出来三个不同的点，我们来比较一下。那当然，最后我们就呃不同的时间，我们选一下，看看它的 outcome。outcome 是 search group， 然后 search group 它出来的什么？为什么这样？那反过来讲，同一个类似的病人，但我们的 outcome 也是做 conclusion， 这是 first， 它放的位置都不一样，我们以前在经历过。那如果来一个 senior 的人来看看，最后的 outcome 是什么？或许这是一个。刚好是做 static 或者是做 data set， 那反过来讲，过去我们这么多的 data 里面，可以抓出来类似的 pathology 或是呃 occlusion， 然后呢，用不同的 search 或是不同的 pathology 的 group 做 design 和出来，这当然是蛮 great 的。不过我们昨天谈了一下，或许我们可以玩一玩，就可以周末做不同的 group 的。那当然，我们现在是所有的。事情都要呢，帮忙我们设计师去去去做。那我们设计本身也要学会做一做，那这样子比较好。反正现在高频音频的都有，好，好，就。Um, I don't have any specific comments at this point. I think that it's it's interesting uh, to take a look at these papers, um, especially the the innovative section of TRS as an uh, as an introduction to potential techniques. Uh, but in terms of whether or not those techniques are widely applicable to different sectors, as I just was mentioning, um, you know the. The details are 